Hi all, Biff Baxter here with WattOS Linux. Just going to give a new update on the newest release of WattOS, uh, which coincides with the previous release of uh, WattOS R10. Uh, this is the edition that uh, everyone's had to wait a couple extra weeks for to get done, which is uh, which we call MicroWatt. And there is a 32 and 64 bit edition of MicroWatt. Um, as of the time of this recording, it's being uploaded currently. The torrents are being seeded and the uploads are being done. So by the time you read this, uh, the site will likely be getting updated and the ISOs will be available for download within the next couple of hours. So if you're an early watcher, you may have to wait a couple hours. If you're catching this a day or two later or months later, uh, they're available on the website planetwatt.com. Go to the downloads area. You will see MicroWatt 32 and 64 bit. Um, the reason we call it MicroWatt um, it's not so much because of the size of the uh, the ISO file, but more that the uh, resources that are required um, are typically less than a normal desktop environment, and um, it's minimal in nature from a desktop in that we're using the i3 window manager, uh, which is a tiling window manager. I have a previous video that's out there that you can go see on this channel that kind of goes runs through the... Um, i3 window manager and all the keybinds. Uh, we've put a few keybinds on the um, wallpaper, as you can see here. Uh, again, this is a, a keyboard centric um, setup. Uh, mouse obviously works in some areas, but it is keyboard centric. You will see down at the bottom of the screen a toolbar that gives you status of things like volume, how much memory you're using, how much. Uh, um, hard drive space you have, your IP address, data in and out, CPU usage date, etc. Um, there are two icons that do run by default. Uh, one is the power manager, uh, which you can go and look at the settings for the power manager, which is the uh, XFace power manager. Um, you can turn the system tray for that off and on if you don't want that there. Um, additionally, the network manager is here as well, so you can click on that and see the network information. Um, and if you were on wireless, you would see additional networks here that you could select and log into and those kinds of things. You can also edit connections from here and uh, things like that. So um, all of that information is in the tray. So you can at least get to that with your mouse. Additionally, the volume area indicator right here, if you put your pointer over it and use your mouse wheel up and down, it will actually change the volume up and down. Um, again, the paradigm with the tiling window manager is that you maximize your real estate. Um, I'm going to open a terminal by hitting uh, Windows key and enter, um, also affectionately known as the mod key or modifier key. So mod, you'll hear me say mod, mod plus enter opens a terminal. Um, if you want to open a second terminal, you can hit mod plus enter again, it'll open a second terminal. Again, as I illustrated in a previous video from about a year and a half ago, um, the functionality remains exactly the same. Um, it's got mouse focus, or you can move via keyboard as well. Again, I'm not going to go through every command here, but uh, wherever your mouse is, is the focus window, or um, you have keyboard commands to move to the focus windows as well. If I hit mod enter again, I'll open a third one, um, and so on and so on. Um, you can also change the orientation from horizontal to vertical. So if I have two open here and I want to change one way or the other, um, you just hold down the mod key and hit E. Mod E goes horizontal vertical if you want to change that. And then again, you can go like that and open multiples. Uh, those are still the same from the previous release. Um, there are um, a couple of different things uh, that we've added for the sake of ease. Windows key plus F, so mod F, opens up the file manager. Uh, we're using PC Man FM, uh, which again, uh, you should be familiar with if you've used LXDE <coughs> or previous versions of WattOS. Um, to open and close windows, um, you can use the menus if you want to close the window. Control Q is the typical bind or just close window if you're, if you're a mouse driven person or you can use mod shift Q. Um, usually any command that requires uh, a, a bit of uh, uh, safety um, usually has a shift modifier to it so that you don't accidentally close a window maybe you don't want to so um, mod shift Q will close any window so if I had two terminals open I went mod shift Q mod shift Q I could close them both uh, mod enter again to open them again 
the um, there is a minimal the, this release I would call so microwatt R10 32 and 64 bit I would call this release the do what you want with it release so in the past um, we have released a lot of different um, applications and things um, that have been bundled within uh, releases um, LXDE release of uh, Watt OS R10 is no exception to that um, but with MicroWatt, we took a little different tact in that it has very minimal uh, programs installed. So uh, there's no flash support out of the box. There's no printing out of the box. There's no uh, music player. There's no, you know, all of those things that are um, that are that would normally be there are not there in this release because the notion is that you take the basis of this to get it installed in a low memory environment, and then then you install what you want. Uh, this also includes a web browser. Now, there is a web browser included in this version, but it is a minimal web browser called Surf. And it's not Firefox, it's not Chrome, it's not Opera or Vivaldi or uh, Slimjet or Cupzilla or Midori or any of the other browsers that you see out there. It is a WebKit-based browser, but it is a minimal keyboard-driven browser. Again, um, there is... Um, uh, up in the corner of the, the wallpaper, you see Windows key plus B for web browser. So if I go mod B, it does open a web browser. It is a pure WebKit um, based browser. So if you, it will run on modern websites um, to open. You, you'll notice again, though, no toolbar at the top, nothing to type into. You could search here, of course, or you can go control G and type in a new web page if you'd like. Oops, planet watt.com hit go and it will indeed um, load normal web pages um, it's not something that won't load graphics or isn't minimal or those kinds of things it does have those things built in um, I have also tested it with a few sites with sound I did include GStreamer also support so that you should be able to get some basic sound as well um, but again there's no flash uh, you'll have to install flash yourself um, it's very easy to do via the, uh, the package manager if you want it. Um, again, the reasoning for this is that everybody has their own preference. So you install an OS, uh, and usually the very first thing you do is you go, I like Chrome, and you install Chrome. Or I like Firefox, and you install Firefox. Or you like neither, and you uninstall what's already there. So what we tried to do is minimize the amount of those exercises you have to do, give you a minimal tool set, a web browser, a file manager, um, basic network connectivity functionality to make quality of life things a little easier for you to get around and the rest is up to you you install or uninstall or add or take away whatever you want we're making no assumptions or reading any minds about that one of the reasons um, I got into um, building uh, my own customized version of uh, Linux was uh, I didn't like what was out there. I didn't like what was bundled by default and you spend a lot of time uninstalling and changing and those types of things. Well, and this, this gives you a little bit more of a basis to do that and, um, and away you go. So Surf is here um, and it works. It, again, it might take a little bit for you to get used to it. We're gonna be updating the uh, wiki and other things with some, some keyboard references. Um, there is a help file in, in, included here um, so that you can take a look at things. Again, to close this works exactly the same way as it does for every other program, Mod Shift Q, and you can close it. Um, if you open a terminal and just hit H and enter, it will open a help file, and it will, and that help file does have some command references here for you so that you can see um, what key commands might work for you. Um, and uh, that's, a, that's something that's there all the time, and you can go reference it real quick if you get into a spot maybe where you're stumped. Um, additionally, there's some other layout options here. If you don't like um, the, the way your uh, windows are arranged, um, again, the default is tiling. Um, you can also stack them or tab them. So um, mod key plus W will make it then tabbed. You can click on those tabs, or again, you can use a keyboard to move back and forth between these tabs if you like that sort of a layout, or you can do mod key S for stacked windows so that they will stack on top of each other. So if I were to continue to open things, you would see that you would get stacks, windows stacked on top of each other. So again, um, it's more of a personal preference. Some windows work better 
uh, stacked or tile or, or tabbed versus being tiled because uh, of the way they get squished. Um, additionally, you can make windows float if you hold mod shift space. You can float a window, so then you can grab it and move it around and resize it or do things you want to do with it. You can also resize windows using the keyboard, but again, I'm not going to get into all of that. Here you can see the other um, i3 video that I did and those, those rules and things are the same. Most important thing to keep in mind here is the file manager. If you really need to get to a program and you don't know the name of it or you're not quite sure what to do, you can always just open up the file manager and go to Applications. You'll see the, the basic categories of applications, and you can open up any of those. Just double click them, and there are shortcuts to, oh, I want to change the look and the feel. I want to change my language. I need to adjust my monitor. Um, I want to install new software. You can use the Synaptic Package Manager, or you can do it from command line. Um, all of those things are there, and um, a basic set of tools. Um, to get you off and running. Not a whole lot of fat. There is a very basic PDF viewer as well called MUPDF. Um, uh, we eliminated events because again there's overhead there and people maybe want Acrobat or don't want a PDF viewer so we put a very basic one in here. Again the notion being that you've got enough here to get on the internet with a basic web browser window. You can view PDFs. You've got network. You've got power management. You've got a really uh, clean, low resource way to uh, use Ubuntu and then do what you want from there. So this is the do what you want edition. Um, the, again, the, um, the applications you can get to via this. There's also a launcher that does do tab completion. Um, it's called GM Run and there's a ton of launchers out there that do that. What that means is that if I hit Windows key or mod, um, plus G, I can run any program I want and it does have tab completion. If I don't know the name of it, I can type in the first few letters and it will start to try to figure out what you're doing. So if I type synaptic and hit tab, I get a window then to go, oh, here's all these synaptic type uh, name programs. Or if I go term and hit that, oh, didn't find anything. The name of the terminal is Secura. I hit tab, hit enter, and I get up, I get the program. So um, Again, mod G, and then whatever after you've installed it, if you install Firefox or something like that, you can do that. Um, if you don't like any of those things and you wanna change the settings, uh, you can open up the file manager and it's a hidden file under the configs. So you can hit Control H to reveal all of the hidden files. And so under the dot config I3 is the configuration for all of the uh, different key bindings to launch different programs and you can change them however you want so um, you'll notice here mod plus l is to lock the screen mod plus s launch f launches the file manager mod plus shift plus plus f launches a root version of the file manager so if you really want to go in and break things you can do that um, mod plus f9 it will disable your touchpad if you have a SIN client based touchpad on your laptop. Um, useful sometimes when you uh, have an external mouse plugged in and uh, you don't want to accidentally bump into the, the touchpad on your laptop. You can turn it off and on with F9 and F10. Um, and there are some other things in here that you can look at as reference. The great thing about this, this thing and one of the things that's great about i3 is that again, um, this is a plain text file. You can go in here, you can edit it, make a backup copy first, um, and then um, restart your i3. Uh, you can do that one of two ways, mod shift R to restart, which does not log you out, but just reloads i3, the window manager, or you can log out, log back in, and you're, uh, you're off to the races. So um, that's, the, that's it, that's the basics. Um, again, a uh, few little references just to get you started here. Uh, the most important one you're probably going to care about is Mod Shift Q, which is to close any windows, or you can use the, the menu to close windows if you really want to. Um, and uh, But some of them don't have menus, so you can Mod Shift Q. Um, lastly, there's two other commands. Um, I'll execute one, but not the other. Mod Shift E, which exits. The window manager and it will ask you do you really want to exit um, or you can say nope i messed up and then lastly there's one called um, mod shift p which is an optional keybind that was just put in um, 
that mod shift P shuts off the computer immediately. It doesn't ask you twice, doesn't say are you sure. It really is just a, an efficient way to power down if you really want to power down. But again, use it with care. <laughs> I think the most important thing is just to go play with it. Um, um, the, the memory utilization is, is quite low. Um, uh, right now, this one's sitting at about 110 meg. It's uh, well below 100 meg on some systems, over 100 meg on other systems. Um, your mileage may vary depending upon what's loaded and additional wireless drivers and other things and hardware. Um, but um, uh, microwatt, both 32 and 64 bit, have been tested on systems that are 10 years old and older, and it does load and work on them fine, and it gives you a nice low memory footprint. Um, or you can load it on a modern system, which is what I do. Um, Core i7 box with 32 gig of RAM, and it runs really, really fast. So go play with it, experiment, and then build the system you want, add the programs you want. Um, this also might be have some useful applications for things like kiosks or things like that where you want to um, minimize the amount of uh, uh, fingers that are in the pie um, without knowing the keyboard commands. You, you can effectively uh, lock the system down pretty well. So MicroWatt is out. Go download it. Give it a spin. Let us know what you think at planetwatt.com. And thanks for watching.